four of our champions return to fight for the right to become super champion. Gentlemen, there are a lot of qualities that make up a Forged and Fire champion, but more than anything, it probably takes... <laughs> son of a... Gentlemen, in your first round of competition, you're gonna have to take these big round balls of 52-100 steel and collapse them all down into those rectangular canoe canisters. You have to fit every single steel ball that is in that dish into that canister to make that signature blade in your signature style between 12 and 14 inches in length. I've never had good luck forging steel balls, and I never actually have done canoe canisters. I've done the other type, so. Good luck, gentlemen. Your three hours starts now. Oh, this is gonna be fun. So the challenge is to get all of these, I think there's 10,000 or so ball bearings into this canister, but two of those ball bearings are way too big to fit in the can. We specifically gave them two large ball bearings that are not going to fit in the canister unless they manipulate it somehow. You can't just grind them, they're really hard steel. You gotta squish them out and try to fit them in like some giant puzzle piece. Most mere mortals can't just forge steel. I can, but it is forged in fire, so I decided to go ahead and use the fire. Spicy Mike is the only one who would put some white out into his canoe canister, and we know that that can either be exceptionally done or just a disaster all the way around, yeah. and typically guys have a problem peeling the can. My plan with the larger ball bearings is to draw them out into long, narrow rectangles that will fit inside the can. So far, it's going slow. The really big ball bearings take a long time to heat up. They take a long time to squish down. <laughs> slow but smooth. That's how you win the race, right? If you look over here at Jonathan, he's very far behind the other Smiths. I know I'm spending a lot of time getting the different pieces of my canister ready, but this is a crucial step in this process. Any inclusion, any bit of grime, anything that's not cleaned well could lead to a failure. Proper planning prevents piss poor performance. Jonathan took a large piece that he drew out, cut it into small sections, and then took each of those small sections and tried to clean the scale off. If you had just taken the whole thing, cleaned the scale, and then cut it, it's about a quarter of the amount of time it would have taken. Well, Big Mike, man, and he's really way out ahead of the oh, pack yeah. at this point. I am ecstatic over this billet. It is solid, it is one piece of steel, and that is magic to me. I'm the magician. Next, I'm going to the power hammer. I'm gonna to try to get a little bit more length out of it. Big Blue, we're buds, man, we're bros. Oh, hey! Yes, oh, Big Blue! I would marry Big Blue if they would let me. Sorry, honey, I, I wouldn't do that, I, I love you. If you didn't know what tests lie ahead, what shape would you prefer to go with? One of our standard three, Camp Bowie Sacks. You know, any of those would do All well. Right. Last time I came in, I kept it simple with the knife shape. Now I want to push myself. So I'm going to make a drop point kukri. If you don't know, kukris have a forward bend. My name is Colin Sage, and this is how you put a bend in a kukri. It's not a technique as used in my shop. That's it. You have just 60 minutes remaining to finish your blades. I finally get the outside of this thing off, but the chromium in the ball bearings forms its own type of strange layer if it's exposed to oxygen, and that can make D lambs. And looking at my welds, that looks like pretty much exactly what happened. Uh, it looks like Mike's pulling out flux. That's not, not a good, good sign. If Spicy Mike's pulling out flux, that means there's cracks or issues in his fillet that he cut out. I dump a whole bunch of flux on it. That's a lot of flux. That's a lot of flux. That's not good at all. He put it on the whole length of that fillet. So there's probably flaws going all the way down the length of that. I can't turn in a blade with non-welded spots. It does not look good. Mike's screwed.
the pressure is on in this competition. To be a super champ, you've got to walk through hell. An hour ago, I wasn't sure I was going to finish. But just going crazy on Big Blue, I have made up some good time. Now it's time to get to that heat treat. There we go. Jonathan, the first Smith to quench. So I set up a straightening jig so that as soon as I come out of the quench, I can bring it right over and just clamp it in there and just let it sit so I don't have any wiggles. Jonathan has somehow come from behind in this yep. competition and overtaken Mike's early success. Big Mike quenching. Woo, doggy, that's a big one. It looks like a banana. I need to go to the grinder. I hope that I can grind most of this out. 30 minutes remaining. So my strong suit's the grinder. Once I got the billet made out, it really doesn't take me very long to get it into at least a knife shape. The thing that bothers me is Spicy Mike didn't really forge a blade. Right. He just drew out the bar, and now he's grinding it. So to me, this is stock removal. To me, this is the most efficient way to get something relatively blade shaped in the shortest amount of time. You know, Colin kept it pretty simple on the tang there. It's just a big rectangle yeah, right now. Yeah, not much to it. Yeah, there's a slight, slight warp, but I'm pretty sure I can grind that out. That sounds like a hard blade to sounds me. Sounds like a hard blade, yeah. Ah! Five, four, three, two, one. Blade Smith, shut down your machines, drop your tools. This first round of super champion competition is over. Nicely done, man, nicely done. My first time here at Forging Fire, I thought that was like the hardest thing I'd ever done. After going through round one yeah. today, I stand corrected. All right, Blade Smiths, the first round of this super champion competition has concluded. And the judges have already evaluated your blades, and there will be no critiques today. The judges feel that a super champion doesn't need to be told how to fix this blade. Spicy Mike, unfortunately, the judges have determined that your blade did not make the cut, and Jay Nielsen's going to tell you why. Spicy Mike, you fought hard, you fought long. We're very proud of what you did. But you've got a big warp in your blade, you've got delaminations, and it was mostly ground instead of forged to shape. And that's not what we're looking for in a super champ. Spicy Mike, we'd like to invite you to shake our hands, shake your competitors' hands and then please exit the forge. Everything the judges said was completely accurate, and I completely agree. It just was not the work that would be able to compete with the other competitors. I definitely didn't prove what I wanted to coming back for a Super Champions Challenge, but I still had fun.